Hello guys and girls and the rest of you. Uh, right, Transit Connect update. Uh, it's getting there very slowly, but I just want to show you around. I don't think I've locked it. New wheel trims because the other ones were less than good. Sanded, new coat of paint, diamond white two. Um, it's just slightly brighter than the original, but when you go when you open the back up, it's even more apparently shit. <laughs> Here we go, and you may remember what this looked like before. This was absolutely horrendous. I've got a new catch come in there, and I have the plate that came out of there. I managed to fish it out through that hole there because when you undo the two bolts that holds the adjustable uh, slam plate in for that rear, rear left door it falls down into the cavity so yeah I'm gonna think of a way to hold that in there whilst I re reboot it so there we go it's uh, yes all looking good uh, those were siliconed they are M10s 10 mil bolt I think it's 1.25 thread no, uh, yeah, I think so. One point five thread. I'm not sure. Quite sure. Yeah, uh, I, I have me. Um, well, I'll tell you what they are. Yeah, M10s. Doesn't say what pitch. Uh, what a bitch. <laughs> anyway, it's M10. Got it in the drill with with um, cutting compound. Done that one and uh, that one there. So that's ready now for the proper D clip load bay carriers and there's two more to do i don't know if you can see it there there's one there look and there's one buried under henry the other side i, I forgot about those two because there is four i think there might even be six actually two yeah two four six could be anyway like i said i've gone round pretty much everywhere yes that's a little bit grubby up there but don't forget i'm going to be putting um dead sound deadening panels in where i can and then the boards are going back on okay i managed to mask up everything look at the doors look like new doors don't they this has all been out in the kitchen sink all these things and the grommets and such was the other one the grommet there that was all masked up um i put a cardboard in there and oh, a bit of ogre spray there but never mind we didn't see that that's we can delete that later yeah, a bit of cardboard in there. Those grommets are out. So I've literally, with the correct paint from Ford, flipping expensive as well. I've done it on both doors. That door was absolutely skanky as hell. So now we're kind of we're kind of getting the picture, aren't we, guys? It's starting to look pretty respectable. I've had this lamp out by doing it, undoing the two thumb screws, and then. When you pull it out on the on the on the loom, there's a connect grey connector about six inches down, just to see if uh, if, the, if it needed cleaning behind there, which it did. It was all green behind there, and if um, if it worked basically, but there wasn't a lamp in there. So anyway, I put a lamp in, and it still doesn't work with the ignition turned on. I don't know whether you need the actual rear lamps plugged in in situ. <laughs> because they are in the skip the skip of horrors in the back garden and I have two um, new ones but they're pattern parts and we all know what pattern parts are lads don't we shite. that's the word shite um, there's a big overlated seal that goes on the back of the light fittings that get compressed when you do the thumb screws up You've got, you've got four thumb screws there, two free sides, and when you do them up, it pulls the light fitting in, and, and that seal is supposed to squeeze against the bodywork, the rear quarter panel there, and make a watertight seal. Now, when you buy these lamps, I managed to get two for 30 quid, which is a bargain. Normally, they're 22 quid each, something like 21, 22 pound. So, two for 30. I wasn't overly expecting a great deal. And uh, it, it delivered. I didn't get a great deal. <laughs> when you pull them in, oh, before that, let's not get ahead of ourselves. The uh, seal, what I had to do is I've got a little tin of Evo sticks. So I sat patiently at the dining room table where, one evening a couple of days ago. Little uh, artist paintbrush. 
So I was dip dobbing and I went round all the seal, and then I went round the back. There's a little like a groove marked on the light fitting, so that's good. Um, put them to one side, did the other uh, the other light fitting all around the seal, all around that. And by the time I'd done that one, the first one was tacky enough and ready to go straight tr straight together. But this this seal, I mean, although it's great, it seems quite thick. And when you start to pull the light fitting in with the thumb screws, um, the top, the top and bottom of the light fitting tend to. It seems like the height of the light fitting is like two mil too big. And instead of going into that recess, it hits the recess. It hits the metalwork, either top or bottom. So I'm going to have to think outside the box there and perhaps get the angle grinder with a very fine paper on it and just whip a, a mill or two off the top and bottom so then it seats in properly. And uh, if you don't do that, it's going to render that seal useless, isn't it? Because the seal's not going to get pinched and squashed. It's not going to create a seal there on the rear lights. Okay, now now I've done all this, I thought I'd tidy up the tow bar. <laughs> they were a sausage to get undone. If you've ever tried undoing a tow bar, they, you know what they're talking. They're talked up to about nine and a half million tons per square torque, aren't they? <laughs> anyway, I bought this thing new. This piece here, it was about oh for goodness sake, thundering again. For about a fiver in Halfords, believe it or not. Because the other one, when I took it all apart, I'll put a picture up in a minute of what it looked like on the back. Everything was rusty, cables were hanging out. Now, I've got this far with it. I had to... If you remember earlier, on this was here on another little bracket bolted through there. Okay? Great big M12 bolt. And then this bracket was all bent outwards, like a you know, like a snake's tongue sort of effect. So I malleted that back in, got it straight, and jiggled this around. And that fit in there, so I thought there's no point in you know putting an extra on there when you can just get away with what you got. Because this is actually properly fixed to the tower bracket. So I reused that seal, took it in the kitchen, in the sink, a bit of washed up liquids, cleaned all that up very very nicely. Put that in. I thought I'll put the cable through. Because you, you know, you, otherwise you're going to get so far and you're going to think, shit, I need to take it all apart again because I haven't put the cable through the hole. Anyway, so I did all that, started making it off, like, I put a couple of cables on there. Of course, you need to do this before that goes on, so I need to still take all that back off uh, and start again. Trials and tribulations. Okay, right, so where are we at? The floorboards. I am going to reuse the floorboards. Uh, I do believe this one is symmetrical. If you draw a line down the middle, this side's exactly the same shape as that side. So I can invert it and use the good side of the wood. Or I could just get my huge belt sander and just do the whole lot. But then we've got these oily patches, you see. But there's a paint patch there, so I'm not sure. Might even get a load carrot, a load uh, liner afterwards. I suppose if I leave it with the wood orientated as it was, the screw posts all going to be the same, aren't they? Which is great, because that's what I need. So, at this moment in time, I am painting the wood panels. One for there, one for there, one for there, and one for there. And guess what colour they're going to be? Yes, they're going to be the shed colour. That lovely, beautiful, deep grey. Gunmetal grey, I like to call it. So... That's going to look quite jiffy, isn't it? Just accentuating the whiteness of the doors, bringing that bang bang. So I'm painting that at the moment. I'm putting some primer down, some wood primer. There's a side panel. It's orientated like that. That's a side door, driver side. So that's the wood that I'm putting. Like I said, the primer's going on first, and then wherever I've put it, great big tin. Oh, there it is. That's the stuff I've been using to do the shed. Urban slate. Yeah, urban fox, more like. Okay, if you, as you remember urban fox on Keith Lemon, fair play to you. Right, so I've got that one to do, that one to do. That's the top of both the doors. That one to do, and that one to do. That's the bottom of both doors. I started off, look, spray painting it, and I thought, because I've got a load of spray paint that I just, I'm never going to use on anything else. 
and it's sort of like interior decorating cloth wood paper stuff and it takes like 9,000 years to dry which isn't really feasible for me yes I've got my spray on so that's that so far um, I better crack on for my paintbrush dries so the paint dries on the brush like I say Halfords wheel trims that's done <laughs> did you see the old bumper that is part well that's what's left of the old bumper so you can see what I was up against to start with that's that's that in the flesh you see it's got it's a special it's got that weight reduction going on there which is great but uh, not the look I'm going for so uh, it's that old project there, that old flipping Briggs and Stratton lawnmower engine yeah these are the old end caps that were held on by Phillips screws so there it's all ready for the skip there Right, what else have we got to do? We have got to do the scuttle panel. Uh, behind the scuttle panel is the pollen filter. That's not here yet. I'm still waiting on that, so that cotton can't go back in. I've had all the trims out of the car, and I have done my best to restore them. Uh, that box there contains the bumper, uh, the bumper overrider, that's the old one, and the two end caps. That's to go on, so that will really tidy that back end up. There's a door sill, I've yet to clean that door sill. Obviously the bottom of the door sill, it's got all sand and grit and shit in there. So I wanted that completely out of the way whilst I was spray painting. Because it, it gets a bit shitty otherwise, you've got like the Santex effect. Oh, speech is getting a lot better, unfortunately for you guys. <laughs> so I'm, I'm dead pleased with that. Uh, still tired constantly but when you're doing stuff the adrenaline kicks in but the trouble is with that you see it's always got a side effect doesn't it because when you finish doing it you just bolt and, that, and that's the end of that oh roof rack now i need to go over this with a fine uh brush I might use the missus's toothbrush again on this because it's got a bit of uh, that lysy like um what do you call it not moss is it that kind of crusty uh, algae type stuff so that's literally over all of the top surfaces and then i might just cane it with some uh satin black that will look tidy and i need to take this roller off all these stainless steel, that's, yeah, it's not stainless steel, because it's nearly seized. It does move a little bit, but it needs to be easified, doesn't it? So I can roll bodies up onto the top of the van in the, in the event of uh, an apocalypse. Right, easy. Do stop waffling. The guys, you guys are bored to death with it. Oh, let's have a look inside the cab. Lots going on in there because the seat was stuck. I don't know if you're, you know, if you're familiar with, well, most modern cars, you've got a little lever at the side of the driver's seat, haven't you? And if you pull it, pump it up, you raise yourself and lower down. This one was stuck in the up position. It's unlocked. So believe it or not, I think you saw from the last video, this is literally, I've just put that in there because it, it's in the way. All that matting has been cleaned that area hasn't been cleaned yet. I, I've, I've deleted the rust under there, but I have found some more under in that little corner there. Basically, it's the two points that are the lowest in the cabin where the water's congregated uh, under the mat or through that tear. So if you've got a tear, lads, don't just leave it because water will get in there, pull underneath and rot your floor out. So I've got to do that. I can't put that back in yet with my uh, with my bodged uh, gear selector gator because it's easier to put that on there with this seat not in there and i can't put that in the back yet because i haven't finished the back uh because i'm being slack as a yak oh uh, crack on crack <laughs> oh dear mischievous so there we are i've got a new um tow bar dildo that uh, dildo johnny to go on the, on there that uh, headrest had a huge stain so somebody was using the old brill cream 
So that had to come off and this is actually in the washing machine right now. Okay, any problems? Not really. I think I know what the leak is it's under the bonnet. Not even looked under there. But I think it's the crankshaft breather system. It's got a catch can. And I think some of the hoses have come off or split or burst or whatever. I'm hoping it's that. Because that is probably the easiest fix. Uh, thanks for your tips, guys. Uh, Andy Cousins, thank you. Spot on, properly spot on. I need to polish the headlights so I can actually see at night. I need to take the wiper arms off. These need the easy treatment, don't they? Look at the state of that. Crust City, rusty. You can't buy these arms anymore. So, luckily, I do what I do. When you did what you did to me. Okay, I'll stop. Right, so how do you think I'm getting on? Answers on the postcard. If anyone knows where I can get this badge, and the bonnet badge, for under sort of four grand, Please let me know why are four badges so expensive that is one of those universal questions that no one will ever be able to answer because it's ridiculous they're like 45 quid for a little bonnet badge that's the second hand one if anyone can come up with badges for this van or something to go on the wheel trims in the middle because the old ones which are now in that box have well it's not stickers it's more of a plate in the middle but you can't find anything online that is the best one out of all of them all the rest have all bubbled up from behind and they're just not reusable that is the same size as the wheel trims on the car now but you just I'm, I'll probably hook that out but it's Starting to go. If anyone knows where I can find stuff like that, I will love you forever, ever, and give you a mention on the channel. Uh, like I say, guys, thanks again for watching, spending time with me, bit being silly with stuff. I really do appreciate it. If you could hit the like button, beaming, absolutely beaming. So there's things are coming around the shed. I can't do anything with the shed yet because I need to sort the van out. Uh, the reason I'm sorting the van out is because the weather's so shite. I can't do anything with the shed. Oh, man. The wind is tearing the canopy to pieces. And Quality has gone and got himself a tick. Took him out last night. He's got a little tick under his chins. Or is it just me with chins? Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. See you later. See you next time. Uh, take care of each other. Do what you've got to do. Thanks again.